الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وذريته أجمعين اللهم ربنا أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم أرنا حقا حقا الأشياء كما هي اللهم ربنا زدنا علما وعملا وإخلاصا اللهم فرج لنا وعن إخواننا في غزة وفي فلسطين كلها وفي سار بلدان المسلمين اللهم نفس كربنا وكربهم ثبت أقدامنا وأقدامهم والتوفين بهم يا أرحم الراحمين صلى الله تعالى على آخر خلق محمد وعلي وصحبه أجمعين شاجي. We had stopped here such a society that is a capitalist society such a society that is a capitalist society said to be a capitalist or one under capitalism such a society so let's read from the To begin with the definition, to begin, we did that. To, a, a capitalist society is a society that has instituted its economy uh, to the private accumulation of capital measure in the units of money through free contract, through free con contractual, through free contractual, contractual exchange in markets driven by individual calculation of utility. Okay such a society the society just described may be said to be capitalist or under capitalism or under capitalism uh, due to its dependent for its uh, dependence for its sustenance on the successful accumulation of privately appropriated capital okay calling society a capitalist also implies that it is a society so society um, which is dependent for its um, uh, fulfilling its material need on private accumulation of capital can be called capital society. Also implies that it is a society that risk uh, that uh, that is at risk that is at risk a society at risk of the social relations governing its economy, pen penetrating into and taking possession of previously non-capitalist social relation okay let's talk a bit about this one so capitalist society the second one it's from polani uh, and even though he's a sort of comes from marxist background but because he's a nationalist and to that sort of a conservative as well to that extent uh, is also so it's free i'm talking about influenced by polani's uh, capitalist um, um economy or society the society which he's saying is at risk which means that as a society as, a kept, as capitalism matures, so capitalism starts with, generally starts with, at the fringes of societies, which are not capitalist. What do we mean by uh, societies which are not capitalist? Societies which are not capitalist are societies in which individuals motivation majority of individuals main motivation is not profit maximization let's be so they are not dominated by um, the evil uh, the evils of accumulation and the evils of avarice and cov covetousness uh, covetousness so those and social relations are not dominated by these two motives or the motive of profit maximization so that's a non-capitalist society it can be a muslim non-muslim it can be any society but these if these motivations are not the overwhelming mot motivation of a society then society is not a capitalist society and most societies until recently have been non-capitalist societies and capitalism emerging emerges in those 
non-capitalist societies through basically imposing itself through violence and through other means. So first, an elite is converted to capitalism and that elite imposes through various means capitalism on society as a whole. So if you study England in 16th century, uh, and the way Protestantism was imposed on England, that was part of, because Protestantism brings with, brings with it capitalism as well, in a sense. So because Protestantism was the first successful ideology of capitalism in, in Europe. So Protestantism uh, during the reign of uh, In the later half of the reign of uh, Henry VIII and then his successor was imposed on England when in most of that period most of uh, England was Catholic especially the north uh, I'm talking about general public but the elite especially in the south was converted to Protestantism and that elite basically imposed Protestantism on, on the whole England in the form of uh, Anglo-Saxon Church or Church of England. And with it, um, the same elite was also a capitalist elite or was converting to capitalism. And through that capitalism was imposed on England as well. But by that, for a long time, general publics were non-Protestant and non-capitalist. So it took centuries uh, to convert uh, the population of England to capitalism. And that was through, you know, their participation of uh, overseas ventures and slaughters uh, and imperialism and all that. So what I want to say was capitalism emerges in non-capitalist societies and generally imposed through violence and other means on those societies. But it takes, and then it from above it penetrates into those societies and convert them into through socialization, through education, through violence, through co coercion to capitalist rationality. And we can say that society becomes capitalists when profit maximization becomes the main motive of individuals and also social relations are subordinated to profit maximization. So society becomes appendage of economy in a sense. So generally uh, in non-capitalist societies Economy is an appendage <laughs> to society. In capitalism, on the other hand, um, society becomes an appendage of and subordinated to capitalist rationality or capitalism or economy or capitalist economy. So, so that's what I mean at the risk of. So as it matures, it, that's what happens. And capitalist rational rationality penetrates into individuals, their hearts, their mind, and also it penetrates into social relations. You can't say that social relations are totally subsumed under that. Uh, obviously, that can never happen 100% as long as we are humans. Um, but um, profit motives and capitalist rational rationality generally overwhelms and subordinate all other relations in mature capitalist societies. Okay. So that's that's what he means when um, calling a society capital also implies that it is a, a society that risk of the social relation governing uh, its economy society at risk of the social relation governing its economy uh, governing its economy penetrating into and taking possession of previously non-capital social relations like your family ties your 
friendships, everything else, what we call social relations become subordinated to or subsumed under uh, economic relations or capitalist motives. Unlike in what I believe uh, are simplistic readings of Marxian political economy, or historical materialism, noting the hegemonic tendencies of the capitalist economy in a capitalist society does not imply that the economy is always predominant subsystem of society in the way of a substructure governing a superstructure. It does imply, however, that it could this could contingently be the case, like historically, factually. But you can show conceptually as well, I think. But not through a substructure or superstructure. Uh, the problem with historical materialism is that it generalizes the capitalist experience to the whole history. That's the problem, not that in capitalism that happens. And also, probably the meaning of what it what do we mean when we say that uh, a society becomes an appendage of uh, economy and capitalist capitalism? Uh, its meaning uh, should be uh, in historical historical materialism is more um, limited. I think um, what we mean is not that social relations become economic relations, but the Economic rationale, oh, sorry, capitalist rationality predominates in a society as a whole. And in that sense, every other relation is subsumed under the so called economic relation. Okay, it does, however, continually in the case that, and that, as will be seen, a progressive subsumption of the social life under the organizing principle of capitalist economy is an inherently ever present danger. of life uh, under camp and needs to be politically counteracted. Yeah, need to be political counteracted, but can it be like in reality? And we will say in the long run, it cannot be because capital, which is basically uh, emptiness, pure emptiness, swallows everything else. But this will become clear as we go. Uh, along. Um, okay, so we'll stop here and continue from here.